that is 10 by 10 beam of very solid oak. And that is what I bought this saw for. I tell you, it works like a dream. Uh, you know, and for this now, for this beam making kind of stuff, I use that Haddon Lumber Maker. I really like that. But now if I was going to make this into boards, I would actually, I, I do this, you know, square it on three sides, then I would go at it with an Alaskan mill. But for just squaring things up in the first place, this Haddon is a much simpler method. You know, all you gotta do is find a good straight 2x6 or 2x4. So you got a guide. And I'm using a, you know, an Oregon bar, an Oregon chain. It's the Oregon rip chain. My God, they were good. And the saw has got plenty of power. You know, that is what I bought the saw for. I've used it some for cutting wood. You know, this is that 372 XP. I've used it some for cutting wood this winter, but it was more to kind of give it a break-in period because when you're doing this, you're running her wide open, you know, all the time. So I wanted to get kind of broke in. But it's a good saw. You know, it's smooth running and a lot of power. You know, I can cut through there. And for this rip and stuff, you know, this 20-inch bar, you know, this came with a 24, but I don't, it, it just gets in a way. A 20 inch is perfect for what I do. You know, it'll cut through, you know, even the, the widest slabs that I make. And your deepest cut is always that first one. And then you get a level piece to nail onto, you know, then it's easy going. And I've got my, my cart out here. I use that for hauling tools around when I'm working. And I guess I never actually showed you when it was done. You know, it's nice because it's got a low platform. You can just pile stuff on it. But this is the thing that I put this red ochre on, which flipped people out. You know, that's an old type of coating. You know, it's a pine tar. And and turpentine and linseed oil, but with red ochre thrown in. And I really like the way that worked. It's an excellent coating. In fact, I've got those two chairs that I bought. There were these things that I bought last fall. And I'm gonna put some of that stuff on there today, some of this red ochre, because it's a good comfortable chairs because it sits outside. Uh, part of the reasoning for the, the, you know, the pine tar just makes it weather resistant or weatherproof really. But the, the red ochre uh, blocks the ultraviolet is why it was used. But the cart looks good, works good. I'm sure it'll work very well on these. Now this beam I'm cutting here, that actually it's a it'll be pilings, so it's gonna be going into the ground. I need a two of them. So now I've got to coat those with pine tar. But there I'll start out pine tar and turpentine and slather it down good and leave them out in the sun. Hit them with a torch, bake it in a little bit. And then uh, the last coat I'll put the pine tar, linseed oil, and turpentine on. Bake that in. Particularly on the ends. You know, you, that's where you really have to do it. In fact, on these chairs, that's what I'll do. I'll probably do one coat first on all the end grain. Then I'll come back and do the, the whole thing. But you got to get into the ends. But, happy with that saw. And I'm happy with that lumber maker. You know, those Alaskans have their place, you know, like now, if I was to cut boards, that Alaskan works like a dream. Once you get a level surface, you got to square it up, you know, you can cut a beam a foot wide and then just cut one after another. You know, they work fine for that. But for the initial squaring up, uh, that hadn't beats anything. 
partly because you know if you've got a taper in your log, you can adjust for that with the, with the head so that you get a, a square one going with the grain. Whereas if you just go at it, you know, even with a bandsaw, if you don't block up one end, you're going to get a, a taper on it. So you'll be cutting at an odd angle to the green. But this works good. And ain't near as exhausting as it was with the smaller saw. You know, because like I say, it's just got all the power you could use. So I'm pleased with that. Well, it reminds me too, uh, you know, when I bought this Husqvarna carpenter hat, I did a video on it. Though I tend not to do it. <laughs> There's clicks in this whole axe thing, and I try to stay out of that crap. <laughs> you know, it's just foolishness. You know, people think of them as a fashion accessory. You know, it's something you hang on the wall. Uh, most of these people that are really into axes don't know how to use an axe. But I noticed uh, I had gotten a comment on the video from Husqvarna USA thanking me for doing the review on the axe. And I thought that was nice, you know, it's nice that that people, you know, that companies pay attention, you know, look to see what people are actually saying. You know, it's the only way to get decent feedback. But in my reply then to that comment, because it did impress me, uh, but I mentioned that, uh, you know, nice to have feedback, yes, but YouTube, like I say, is a clicky thing on stuff like that. It can be on guns, it can be on anything. Uh, there are certain very vocal groups whose opinion you really can't take seriously. You know, like I say, to them, axes are a fashion statement. They aren't a tool. So I just cautioned them, you know, take that YouTube feedback with a grain of salt, but it was good to see that they're actually, that somebody's paying attention. You know, it's encouraging. Instead of, you know, companies will put out a product and continue to put out a product that's subpar and, and really don't care. You know, and then and act surprised when they lose their business, you know. So it's good that they, they look at it. But I have my dinner and then back to work. I got a whole other log to work on. And I got to get pine tar on that thing as long as the sun is shining. I have to put pine tar on.